everyone. Welcome to the book trip After Dark. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Liliana Hart. She's an amazing author. Her new book is called Captured in Surrender. It's a part of the 1001 Dark Nights Anthology. Um, and Liliana is a New York Times and USA Today bestselling author. She's one of these self-publishing superstars um, and she has fans all over the globe um, and we're very excited to talk with her today. Um, Liliana, why don't you tell us a little bit about Captured in Surrender? Uh, it uh, takes place in my McKinsey world um, and for those of people that aren't familiar with the McKinsey's, it's a very hot um, suspense series around one family, uh, most of them in law enforcement or military. And um, so I just took um, my McKinsey world and, and uh, introduced some new characters in Naya Blade and uh, Lane Grayson. Naya is a bounty hunter, and um, Lane Grayson is a deputy for the sheriff's department, who, and the sheriff is Cooper McKinsey. Um, you know, and, you know, she's got a warrant out for her arrest, and it's pretty hot for her, so... There's lots of handcuffs and other stuff. Good stuff. Excellent. <laughs> now, I want to remind viewers uh, that today we are giving away some of Liliana's favorite things over at Book Trip. So right after the chat, head over to booktrip.com to enter to win. Um, and also, please remember to sign up at Book Trip for the latest news on uh, live chats, book reviews, giveaways, original content, the works. Um, and Liliana is very active on Twitter. You can follow her. And what's your Twitter handle again? Uh, it's Liliana underscore Hart. Excellent. Uh, you can follow us at BookTrib, and we are going to get going with some viewer questions. Let's see here. Okay. It, Tony Whitmere wants to know, if you could be any of your characters, who would you be? Good question. Um, well, I would not actually pick JJ Graves or Hang on, and everyone, I think we're having a little bit of technical difficulties. Liliana will be right back. You know what? I'm not sure if any, if everyone got that. You kind of um, blinked out for a second. You could, would you mind repeating your answer? So sorry. Can you hear me? Hello. Okay, we're gonna head over to the next question. Selena wants to know, you spent several years teaching in the public, ed, public school educa public education system, excuse me. What made you switch gears uh, to writing uh, books? I've always, uh, the question is, uh, I spent several years teaching music in the public education system. What made me switch gears? I um, have always written. I started my first book my freshman year of college. and. Um, you know, I, I've been writing ever since, and, you know, I had to have a job while I was writing, so I was a teacher for a while, and then um, I, you know, writing's my passion, it's what I always wanted to do, so, um, you know, it was a no-brainer when, when it was time to, to switch over, mm -hmm. um, you know, to... Now, to I saw that you, can you hear me? I'm having problems. Can you hear me, Liliana?
if you all can hear me. Um, I just wanted to remind you all to head over to booktrip.com after this to uh, sign up and enter to win some of Liliana's favorite things. Can you hear me now? You're back! I think so. I don't know what's wrong. I don't know how to fix it. We have to, you know, give a sacrifice to the Wi-Fi gods or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> I have lots, it says I have lots of bars. I don't know. I'm really bad at technology, you guys. Well, I have a let's force see. If we... It's awful. A force field. A magical force field? I think your yeah, your it's... magical power is writing, so maybe it's disrupting the force or something. Um, <laughs> So I saw in a video that you did for Amazon uh, that you are a water writer, that you feel most comfortable yeah. when you're writing in water. Can you tell me more about that? And how did you find out that you're a water writer? And what type of water do you feel contributes to <laughs> the most productive writing session? I'm dying to know. Um, type of water. <laughs> Just tap water. <laughs> um, I... <laughs> I don't even know how that happened. I've always read in the bathtub, so I guess it makes sense that I would write in the bathtub too. But I have this really mm -hmm. awesome bathtub desk that just kind of pulls across the tub, and um, you know, I set up with my drink and my popcorn or whatever I'm snacking on that day, or milk duds maybe. And um, you know, I'll just sit in the tub for like three hours and write. And oh, that no sounds special wonderful. kind of water. <laughs> I keep it pretty hot. I just. I just refill, fill up the hot water. That's excellent. Yeah. And I'll, now, are there I'll any the love shower. scenes in any of your... Oh, yeah? Say How do you manage time? that? Well, one I was saying that are there, any, are there any love scenes in your books that have to deal with the bathtub as well? I mean, since it's such a key part to your process. I have a lot of shower scenes in my books. Like, um, a lot. <laughs> There's one in Captured and Surrender, as a matter of fact. Excellent, guys. You hear it. You heard it here first. There is a shower love scene. Be sure to check out Captured and Surrender. Um, let's see. Now, Selena wants to know, some would say uh, that your book is somewhat autobiographical. Um, would you ever write a tell-all book about your own experiences, about your life and your experiences, oh. like your memoir? <laughs> Okay, so she's talking about the um, Addison Holmes series, and um, no, I would not, but <laughs> there are, a <laughs> I would not write, um, you know, a memoir or anything. There's enough of me in my books, I think. But um, yeah, the Addison Holmes series, um, Addison and J.J. Graves are two different sides of the same coin. They're me. Um, Addison is the, uh, you know, the flaky side of me, who mm -hmm. um, is kind of accident prone, and then JJ is the more serious, uh, darker side. And so they're both really comfortable for me to write um, because I just put myself in the situations that they would be in. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, there are a lot of um, things that have happened, you know, in real life that are that are in each of those series. Um, the characters, especially the Addison Holmes characters, everyone is taken from someone I know. Um, oh, really? No, yeah, there are no made-up characters there. Nobody ever recognizes themselves, though. It's awesome. <laughs> Do you ever write any of your fans into your books? By any chance, have you ever done, I'm like... Um... Uh-oh, say it one more time. Oh, no, I just asked if you um, have ever held a contest where, you know, the winner's name gets included in a book or anything like that. No, I need to do that. I'm going to do it. <laughs> That's a good idea. That's awesome. I'll do it. Now, let's see. Um, Linda wants to know, your other book, Sizzle, just came out, and Crave will be coming in May. How easy or difficult is it for you to write so many books in such a short period of time? And let me just say, before I interviewed you, I was reading some of the other interviews that you've done, and I really admire your, your writing process. I, I think it's very inspirational. Um, you really just, you know, let the words kind of fly out of your fingertips and onto the page. And can you tell us a little bit more about that? 
and what it's like writing um, more more than one series at the same time. I I actually I don't write um, I don't write like two books at one time. I'm very I, I can't do that. I tried actually doing that and it doesn't work well. Um, I get really confused because I I immerse myself in the characters. And um, my moods actually take on my character's moods. So I, when I'm in the middle of a book, oh, really? I'm in the middle of a book. And um, as as the writer, um, you know, I I treat it as everyone on the page is a real person. And mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm more of an observer, and I'm just as surprised as everyone else the things that my characters say or what happens to them. Or, um, you know, I, I, it's like I'm just in a theater looking down on a stage. And mm -hmm. so I'm a third party completely. And, you know, my fingers just fly. The story, I, I see it as a scene, just like in a movie. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I just put it on the page. I do what they tell me to do. And, um, you know, a lot of times dialogue and stuff will come out. And I'll have moments where I'm just like, I can't believe you just said that <laughs> or like they're real people, you know, and it completely takes the story in a different direction. I wasn't expecting. Um, well, you that must seem wonderful. It's like, I'm, it's crazy, right? It's not normal <laughs> <laughs> to do it like that, but um, that's just my process. I guess I just, I see what happens and I just, yeah. I'm, I'm just like the translator, I guess. I don't know. Does time fly when you're writing? Do sometimes, you know, you look up from your computer and you realize it's, you know, four hours later than you thought it was? Time just disappears. Some days are like that. <laughs> Some days are like that. Some days I'll, mm -hmm. you know, write 5,000 words and in a few hours I'll look up and I'll be amazed. And then other days I'll sit in front of the computer for, you know, 12 or 14 hours and, and barely get, you know, three or four pages out. So there are days that are struggles, mm. for sure. Yeah. yeah. Those, are, those are the wine days. I have a lot of wine. <laughs> well, Anne Welch wants to know, who is your muse for all the hot Mackenzie men? Of course Anne Welch wants to know that, Anne Welch. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Um, well, let's see. Who is for the hot Mackenzie men? Would, would Anne believe me if I just told him I just make them up? I just make them up, <laughs> and they're not real. <laughs> I'm reading her comments on the side. It's so funny. <laughs> no, and they're not um, real people. <laughs> you seem to have a really great rapport with your readers. What is it like day to day? Do you communicate a lot on social media? Um, you know, do you correspond via email? What's it like for you? Uh, yes, I spend a lot of time, uh, you know, talking with my readers. I think that's really important, you know, that's why I do what I do. Um, so, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'll check in. I, I wake up pretty early in the morning and I'll get my writing done early and then I'll check in usually about 8 o'clock or so when normal people wake up in the morning and start doing stuff. And then, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'll check out for a couple more hours and get some more work done. I check in at noon, you know. So I'm, I'm in and out throughout the day, and and um, I try to keep track of everything that's going on and uh, having conversations and, and stuff like that, you know. So Excellent. yeah, but I think I think staying connected with your readers is really important. Oh, I think so. Yeah, definitely. Now, Candace wants to know. First of all, I love all your books and really enjoy the camaraderie of being on your street team. So thank you uh, for allowing me to have great times with you guys. I know you've talked about diving into the Elder Mackenzies. As a history buff, I'm extremely interested in these projects. What kind of research would you have to do to bring these books to reality, and when might we expect them? Wow, Candace, asking the hard <laughs> questions. Well, um, I... I know that there are going to be some books about the older Mackenzies, um, so I can tell you that much. I know that um, there'll be westerns, like hot westerns, uh, Excellent. You know, with some cowboys and, you know, marshals, U.S. marshals. Um, 
I can tell you it, they'll be pretty hot, like all Mackenzie books. Um, and that's pretty much as far as I've gotten Candace. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I've got nothing else. Now, on, so. who's, who's your favorite romance erotica author? Who got you into this genre? Oh, my gosh. I read my first romance novel when I was 16, which, you know, I haven't got a 12-year-old daughter, so those books are staying away from her because um, it'll change <laughs> your life. Um, so my dad brought home a big box of garage sale books, and in the box was one book by Jan Ann Krantz um, called Trust mm -hmm. Me. And he said, don't read this book because it's not appropriate for you. <laughs> And I immediately... So, of course, that was the first book the you took, right? Yes, I did. And so I snuck it out of the shelf and read it under my covers in secret. And um, that hooked me ever since. So I have... And I literally devoured all romance novels from then on. I read every subgenre of romance that I could get my hands on. Like, I remember going to the bookstore... And um, I would pick out the books by how thick they were, how thick the spine was, um, just so I could read longer. Um, mm -hmm. And it eventually, that's, that's really actually one of the reasons I started writing, because I, I kept going to the bookstore, and I'd read all the books. And wow. uh, so I was just waiting for authors to come out with new books. And so I was like, well, I should just write my own while I'm here and uh, while I'm waiting. So that's what I did. Now, I understand um, that, you know, self-publishing wasn't your first route. You tried a few times to go the traditional route. You didn't have trouble getting an agent. You didn't have trouble getting an editor. But what I find interesting is they had trouble when they were trying to figure out when um, how to market your book and how to find an audience, which is clearly not a problem now. Um, and could you tell me a little bit more about how this all happened for you? Yes. Um, yeah, you know, it's funny because I figured out how to market myself pretty well. <laughs> um, exactly. But the, um, my, Addison Holmes was my first series that had interest, um, uh, from everybody. And, um, people that have read the series know that it is, um, it is very firmly two different genres. And, mm -hmm. like, especially in the first book, but there's not enough romance to make it a romance novel. Because it's a it's mm -hmm. a multi you know the romance materializes over time, um, but they can you know they if they don't know where to shelve it you know they're not going to waste their time on it so and then JJ right. Grades came along and it was the same thing you know, um, and you know like you said I never had trouble getting agents and I had really great agents I have a great agent now, and mm -hmm. um, you know it's. Uh, when I started out, I guess it was June 2011, around that time. And so I put those books out there because, um, you know, I knew they were good books. They'd been edited. They'd been, you know, almost sold. They'd been you know, acquired by editors but shot down um, in marketing. And so I was, you know, I had nothing to lose and there was nothing to do with them. But I knew that readers would like them. Um, mm -hmm. So I, you know, I started putting those out. and. Um, you know, it's it just took off from there. And then I was like, oh, my gosh, I should write more books. <laughs> so I did. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, it, it kind of motivates you. Like, I mean, I wrote for a long time, so I had I had a pretty big backlog of books um, to mm -hmm. put up. Um, you know, and so things just kind of took off from there, and, and nothing motivates you to write more than seeing, you know, readers respond to what you write. And um, and I will write as fast as I possibly can to to keep them satisfied for that. So mm -hmm. I try, even though my fingers are bleeding sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all fun. It's all good. It's a great job. Mm -hmm. What was it like? You know, that first month that your books were up. I, I didn't you have like this whole slew of sales the first months? And I mean, what was that like for you after all this time? Um, you know, uh, trying to traditionally publish, and now you have this new avenue. And tell me about how what that yeah, was I like. I was actually, I was blown away um, because I did not 
I mean, because back when I started self-publishing, um, it was still very much, um, you know, something you should not do. There was very much a stigma involved yeah. to self-publishing. And so I, I didn't tell anyone, um, not even my family, that I was doing it. I didn't tell any friends. It was just me and my books. And so um, I think that was probably the biggest surprise because, um, you know, I didn't, you know, every time you have a book come out, your family and friends is always the first one to rally and, and support you and buy your books. But I didn't have that when I started. And so I did it as a big secret because, um, you know, there were people in my local chapter and people that I knew that had been friends for a long time that were like, you're making a huge mistake, your career is going to be over, <laughs> you know, what are, what are you thinking? Um, and there was a lot of, um, you know, there were, there were a lot of uh, interesting conversations, I guess, be it said. But um, I did it anyway, and I went three months without telling anyone what I was doing but during those first three months you know I think my first month I sold like 444 books that blew my mind you know because mm -hmm. wow. 444 people that I did yeah that I didn't know not family or friends were buying my books and um, by the time the third month came around I'd sold almost 20,000 and that's so it a, happened that's very amazing. very quickly yeah happened wow. very quickly that's impressive now, do you, Linda wants to know whether you have a favorite series that you write. Uh, she personally likes the McKenzie Family series, so many great installments. How many are there going to be in total? Those are a few questions. <laughs> um, all right, let's see. Make me think. Um, so I've got Crave coming out May the 26th, 27th, something around there. So that's the next one. And then... Um, I've got a couple more McKinsey novellas coming out this year. Riley's follow-up novella, Cooper's follow-up novella. Um, and then starting at uh, 2015, we'll, be, uh, we'll start out the year with Shane McKenzie's book. Um, so those of you that keep sending me emails, ask him when Shane's book is going to come out. It's the beginning of 2015. <laughs> Mark <sorry>. your calendar. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Mark your calendars. And then um, Need will come right after that. That's Brady Scott's book. Mm -hmm. And then um, that will be the end of the main uh, suspense series, uh, you know, the McKinsey series, the security series. But there will also be, like we talked about, um, there will be the historical with the original McKinsey's. Um, there will be a couple books in that because there's two brothers. And then um, Jaden McKenzie is going to get a book. We got it, we got a little bit of a taste of him as an older adult in uh, in a Christmas wish. So um, you know, it's there. There will be plenty more. Well, several, mm -hmm. plenty mm -hmm. for you guys, surely. And mm -hmm. I'm sure that. I'm sure that other characters will pop up because they always do, and that's the series just keeps evolving. So, and uh, so there will mm -hmm. always be recurring. And also, um, you know, I have a spinoff series with Killshot in the Collective series, which is um, those are a little bit darker, a little bit meatier thrillers. But um, Gabe Brennan is the first book in that, and you actually meet Gabe in the, the McKinsey series. But you know, there could be some McKinsey follow. Uh, follow-ups and the rest of that series as well. So we'll probably see a couple um, cameos from like Declan and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. so, cool. You know, now, plenty more. I have a question. Oh, excellent, of course. Um, I have a question about the 1001 uh, Dark Knights anthology. How did you, do you know all the authors who are involved in that in the anthology personally? How did you, um, you know, decide to participate? Um, well, I know I know most of them personally, um, but um, I was I was actually a late addition to um, to the anthology, and I'm I was super excited to be invited. I guess I got invited about December, so it was a pretty quick turnaround time. I wasn't going to say no though, because it's awesome. I love the project. I love the idea of the project. Um, mm -hmm. So, and you know, it's it's a great group of authors, and um, you know. I'm friends with several of them, and you know, it's. I think it's a. Anytime you're excited about any project, you know, my gut is going to say to do it, even if I have to. You know, 
even if I have to squeeze in writing a novella, <laughs> mm -hmm. even though I have a deadline like the same day, I'm going to do it. So <laughs> that's excellent. Now, um, let's see. Holly says here, rumor has it you were a pretty good liar as a kid, and it's what led you to write fiction. Uh, that seems like a fun story to tell. What was writing a creative outlet ever since you were little? I'm trying to figure out who Holly is now. Did you know me when I was a little kid? Because I probably <laughs> was a pretty good liar as a little kid. Um, no, like, you know, fiction is its own, own brand of... I don't even remember what the question was. Now I'm, like, stuck on trying to figure out who Holly was. Holly. Oh, where'd it go? I don't know, I don't I know where the, the question, question went. <laughs> um, she, at, she said, um, she, rumor has it that you were, you know, a, a liar as a little kid. Did that, uh, how did that help you be, uh, start to write fiction, and was it a creative outlet for that kind of, um, I guess, trait? <laughs> Probably. I could be lying right now, though. Who knows? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, no, I was a pretty good kid, actually. Um, so I don't know. But, yeah, it's, you know, I, I think more as a kid, I was always in my own head. You know, I had no idea what was going on outside mm -hmm. of whatever was happening inside my head. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and I was making up stories and making, you know, there was always some other world happening um, besides my own actual life. And mm -hmm. I do that as an adult, too. So it's best probably that I put them down on paper because, um, I don't know, they'd probably, like, cart me off to Crazy House or something because, um, <laughs> you know, it's not normal. But, um, you know, it's, it, you know, you can, I can't stop it, you know, the, the worlds and the, the people that, that pop in and, and mm -hmm. um, you know, they have conversations and I have conversations back. Um, so. I'm not really crazy, but I just can't. I have a daughter just like me. She's, um, I promise, I'm not crazy. Um, I have a daughter just like me. Um, Does she write? You know, no, not yet. She's very um, artistic, though. She's going to, mm. you know, she's going to go somewhere in that direction. But, um, you know, it's, it's its own, fiction It's its own reality, you know. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I can live in that world for a while and my day job and, and then I can go back to my real life, you know, and, yeah. and juggle the two. And it satisfies a part of my, myself that, um, you know, to, to experience new things and other things and what other people are thinking and, and um, mm -hmm. you know, it feeds the creativity. Definitely. Now, Stephanie wants to know what shows you're watching right now. Are any guilty pleasure series you been watch binge watch? Excuse me. Oh man, I wish like I'm the worst TV watcher ever. Everybody's always like, "Have you seen this?" And I'm like, "No," because um, like <laughs> I seriously work like like 16 hours a day. Um, yeah. But when I'm when I'm on vacation, um, when I do take a couple days off, like between books or something, I I will binge watch shows. Like I'm a huge Bones lover and. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like Veronica Mars, and um, let's see what else do I watch? Are you excited about the new movie? Yeah, I know. I need to see it. Um, I don't have time to go to movies either. Not really. I need to make some more time <laughs> to do that. Um, I'm, I'm a pretty boring person in real life. Um, no, I find that hard to believe. Damn. No, well, you know, you gotta. I write, you know, six to eight books a year, so there's not a lot of time for mm -hmm. uh, shenanigans. So, you know. Definitely. Now, MJ Rose, fellow 1001 Dark Nights anthology author, wants to know, where do you get your inspiration? Where do I get my inspiration? Oh, gosh. Um, you know, all of my heroines have a lot of me in them. Like, I just... I can't help it, you know, when you're when you're in that situation, when you're like sometimes I try to 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 write these heroines that are um, more passive, you know, and more 
I don't know right, what the right word is, but like you know these these heroines that um, you know gain strength throughout the story, you know, but I can never get it to come out right. So all my heroines are just like these super like they're very they're all alpha females, um, and mm -hmm. and I can't seem to write any other kind of heroine. Um, where do I get my inspiration? I I um I do a lot of research. I interview a lot of people. Interview a lot of um, you know law enforcement of all different kinds. Um, Have I, you ever gone out on the job with any? Say that one more time. Have you ever gone out, you know, um, on a call with a police officer or maybe a private detective yeah. or anything like that? Oh, excellent. Yes. Yes, I, um, I'm, you know, observed autopsies and, um, you know, that kind of stuff. It's fun. Um, you know, fun for me. I think it's fun. But, yeah, I'll spend quite a, quite a bit of time with different um, kinds of law enforcement officers and spend time with them interviewing them because I forget who asked the question about if there's, um, you know, McKinsey men that were real. Oh, it was Anne. Of course it was. Um, not not so much physical characteristics a lot of the times. So I won't take it, but, um, uh, you know, but the the personalities of the men and women that I interview, like all law enforcement, are always um, very accurate characteristic-wise. So, um, yeah, I guess that is true, Anne. I was thinking, I know you were thinking, like, do they look like that? No. They don't, but um, you know there is a Declan McKenzie out there, and there there is a um, <laughs> there you know there there are men like that out there who have that mentality, and um, and that's what I try to get across, um, you know, when when I paint my characters. So yeah, I spend a lot of time doing fun research like that. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Mary wants to know, have you ever wanted to go back and change something um, in one of your published books? I don't know. No. You know, I write and then I move on. Like, because I don't think. No, there's nothing I would change. Mm -hmm. Nothing I would change. Um, sometimes I paint myself into some pretty good corners. Because, uh, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm an observer. I don't plot. So I ha never have any idea where books are going or how the end is going to be or what's going to happen three books from now. So I don't know. Um, so sometimes I paint myself into some pretty good corners, and I've got to figure out how to get out of them. But, you know, other than that, I don't, I don't regret anything I've, I've put in a book. Now, before we wrap up, um, we have a question here from Anne. One more question from Anne. Um, any advice uh, for up and coming authors? Yes. Uh, my first advice is always to write the book, um, even when it's hard, mm -hmm. you know, to sit down and make yourself write. Um, because you can't do anything without a finished product. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and you, you just have to tell the story. And I think that would be my second piece of advice is to not not listen to people's advice. It's your story mm -hmm. and to tell the story. Um, you know, it's always about the story. And, um, you know, you can always go back and fix, um, you know, fix writing or fix, you know, things that don't sound right. But um, the story is what's important. So if you get the story down on paper, you can fix everything else. That's good advice. Um, and actually, I do have one more. I want to get Teresa's question in here. She says, congrats on your new release. Uh, when does Captured in Surrender take place time-wise? And should she read it before or after a certain other Mackenzie story? Okay, so um, time-wise, Captured and Surrender takes place about six months after Cooper. Um, so he's, because Cooper is in Captured and Surrender, and he's, he's still newly married, so like, you know, six mm -hmm. months or so. Um, I, I know the, the McKenzie timeline does move around quite a bit, as, like with the novellas it does. So like, uh, you know, Christmas Wish and then, um, you know, Dane, they're together. 
but it's 10 years later, the edition. And same thing with Thomas, you know, or you no, know, Thomas is 10 years later. Dane is like right, right after each other. And it's going to be the same thing with Riley. Cause I get emails like that all the time. They're like, your, your timeline on your website says, but the, the timelines jump around. So, um, all the, the stuff on the, the McKinsey website, there's a McKinsey series website um, for people that follow the series but didn't know that, like with um, like character profiles and family trees and all that kind of stuff that people like to look at. But, um, What's the website? It's mckinseyseries.com. Excellent. Good. Yeah. But, um, so the, the stuff on the website... Um, that is all like the very latest news. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the that's their happily ever after. So, yes, on the timeline it'll say they have three kids, but in the books it, they don't have kids yet or something like that. So it's telling the story. Um, so it's it's easy to get them confused, I guess. But each one takes place mm -hmm. in a different time period in their life. So just to kind of right. get them caught up. Excellent. Well, I want to thank you again, Liliana, for coming to talk with us today. We had a fabulous time, um, and we wish you all the luck uh, with your upcoming releases, and we hope to hear from you again soon. Um, and everyone, remember to head... Oh, thank you so much for being here. Um, and uh, remember to head over to booktrip.com to enter to win some of Liliana's favorite things and enter uh, your email so you can kept up on, up to date on all the latest live chats, original content, giveaways, and more. Thanks so much. Have a good night. Thank you.